How does God equip the church for its mission? That's the question that we're looking at in today's daily devotion. I'm Pastor John Blevins. It's Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. I'm thankful that you're here with us for another devotion. And yes, I apologize. We're continuing in our uh, little season here of technical and scheduling difficulties uh, that is requiring an audio only instead of a regular video and perhaps even uh, going to be a little shorter than normal. But Lord willing, we're going to get back to a regular, more normal video uh, daily devotion schedule very soon. All right, well, I'm thankful that you're here with us regardless. I appreciate your patience and pray that the Lord is going to bless you with our short time together. So let's hear from God first as we seek to better understand this question that we might turn around and answer it. Let's answer it on a sure foundation, uh, and that is God's Word. So let's hear from God. Ephesians chapter 4, I'm going to read verses 11 through 16. And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into him who is the head into Christ from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which is equipped when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. That's one of several of our study passages you'll see down in the description. Those study passages, they come together uh, and they provide for us the structure that gives us our theology portion. And we're going to, as we've been doing in our shorter devotions, allow the theology portion to really carry the weight of answering our question, uh, which is, how does God equip His church for its mission? Uh, now, the mission we find in Matthew 28, as in the Great Commission, as the Lord Jesus Christ told His church what her business was to be about. What is the main focus that they are to seek to accomplish? And that is to go out, proclaim the gospel in all the world, that they might disciple the nations, that they might disciple uh, those in every tribe, tongue, and nation, the elect whom God has and is saving so that as the gospel is preached, the Holy Spirit is using that as the church is going forward, proclaiming the truth of the gospel and the word. The Holy Spirit is drawing the elect, causing them to be saved. And then they are brought into the church through baptism. And they are baptized in the name of the Father and of the name of the Son and of the name of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says that he is the one that will be building his church and that he'll be with his church until the end of the age. He will not desert us. He will not leave us to do this on our own. And then we just read from Ephesians, uh, the great gifts of uh, that God gives to his church, particularly at this point, the shepherds and teachers, that their job is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry as the body works together. So that we proclaim Christ, the church does, proclaiming Christ when the Holy Spirit saves someone, brings they're brought into the church through baptism, membership in a local body of Christ. We then see the Holy Spirit working and in helping individuals as they are discipled, they are sanctified, and they are made more like Jesus Christ every day. And we see that equipping of the saints for that service and ministry to one another as they become Christ-like in all things. All right, well, that's a little bit of an expanded explanation there of what the mission is. 
And we are looking at how God equips the church for this mission. And so we're going to turn first to Westminster Larger Catechism. And we're going to read question 63. What are the special privileges of the visible church? The visible church hath the privilege of being under God's special care and government, of being protected and preserved in all ages, notwithstanding the opposition of all enemies, and of enjoying the communion of saints, the ordinary means of salvation, and offers of grace by Christ to all the members of it in the ministry of the gospel, testifying that whosoever believeth in him shall be saved and excluding none that will come unto him. Let's turn now to Westminster Confession of Faith, chapter 25, and we're going to read section 3. Unto this Catholic visible church, Christ hath given the ministry, oracles, and ordinances of God for the gathering and perfecting of the saints, in this life to the end of the world and doth by his own presence and spirit according to his promise make them effectual thereunto well i appreciate you taking a few minutes to be with us uh, in today's daily devotion let's go to our great god in prayer oh lord we thank you that not only have you given to us your church, the mission that you desire to be accomplished, but you equip your church, you equip the saints, you give gifts to the church of those who would be used by the Spirit as the Spirit works, the means that bring about the equipping for the saints. Oh Lord, you truly are a loving and awesome God, and we are so thankful. We pray that your church would be equipped to do its mission and that it would glorify you in all things. Let us not be distracted by pseudo missions. Let us not be distracted by our culture's desire for the church's mission. Let us not be distracted by the good things that we would set aside the best. And Lord, at the same time, as we seek to obey you and to fulfill the mission you've given to us, let us not also forget the responsibilities and the things that you have called your people to do and the church to do alongside its primary mission. So Lord, we pray and ask that you might give us great wisdom to be faithful to you and your word in all things. Lord, we carry such heavy burdens and oftentimes those burdens get in the way, sadly, of us living faithful lives so we bring those burdens to you today and we lay them at your feet and we're thankful that you've called us to do this very thing help us lord help us to love you better help us to love your word better help us to love our neighbors better lord grow our faith be merciful to us in jesus name amen well, again, it was great to be with you. Look forward to being with you again tomorrow, Lord willing. Until then, may our great God bless and keep you.